Hi, my name is Diana, and I'm a Developer Relations Engineering Manager here at Google. Today, I'm excited to talk to you about the new version of the Play Billing system uh, and how to migrate to the Play Billing Library version 5. So in today's talk, first we're going to introduce the new capabilities built into the system, especially for subscriptions, and then we're going to check what changes your integration may need to adopt these new capabilities. So let's talk about this new set of capabilities. The first thing you need to know is that the new version was built completely backwards compatible, so your app, your backend integration, and your current subscriptions work exactly as before. You can adopt the new capabilities gradually, so once you adopt Playbill and Library 5 and the new backend endpoints, you're ready to add them to your integration little by little. And we have introduced uh, new ways to sell and manage your subscriptions, reducing the operational cost uh, that is associated with uh, the need to create and manage an ever-increasing list of SKUs. So for the new features, uh, we have new ways of, of selling subscription plans, uh, like prepaid plans, and uh, with price change management and pricing cohorts, you're in control of when your existing subscribers get a new price when you need to update your subscription product's pricing. Um, there's new offering capabilities, for example, pricing phases for easier, more flexible offer definition, and also easier offer eligibility control. Um, there's another interesting addition uh, with base plan and offer deactivation, which allows you to activate or deactivate what subscription products are available for purchase in your app. That, along with tags, gives you uh, a flexible way of managing your subscriptions catalog without, without having to do many code changes when you change what's available for purchase. If you want to see more about how the new uh, subscription configuration capabilities, uh, you can read the Create and Manage Subscriptions article on the Play Health Center. So, subscription products of Google Play Billing are now represented by a hierarchy of new entities uh, that relate with different aspects of the user's relationship to the subscription product. So, subscriptions represent what you're selling to the user, the product, the benefits, and the description. Base plans are how you're selling it to the user. So, it talks about whether if it's another renewable plan or a prepaid plan, the billing period length, and also the base price and offers our pricing modifications that you can apply on top of the base price. So for example, free trials or introductory prices. Developers can also establish their offer eligibility criteria. We have introduced new classes, both in the Play Billing Library and the Google Play Developer API to manage these new entities. Um, your pre-existing subscriptions before the launch were automatically converted to these new entities. But what happened with them? Don't worry, any existing subscriptions work exactly as before and were, are now represented by one subscription object with one backwards compatible base plan. And if you had enterprise free trial, one backwards compatible offer. There can only be one combination of backwards compatible base plan and offer in each subscription. This ensures that the system knows how to translate back to the older entities used by live versions of your app. And um, your converted subscriptions were made read-only in the conversion process. This is just to avoid any accidental changes after the switch. And you can make them editable again from the Play Console. If you do that, mine, if you make any changes, that you're not affecting your live versions of your app in any way that can break them. It might be simpler to create new subscription for the, for the new versions of your app that we're going to build with Playbill and Library 5. And to read more about how to configure your subscriptions catalog for this new system, you can read the documentation that is uh, referenced there at the bottom. Okay, so now that we have seen the new features that we released and the state of your subscriptions catalog right after the conversion, we will discuss how to gradually move to the new model. Google Play Billing integrations. Um, are uh, talk to the uh, Play backend via the Play Billing library from the Android app, 
and the Google Play Developer API from the developer backend. This developer backend component is essential to manage the subscription entitlements correctly and efficiently. For this migration, you're going to have to uh, modify probably both. While you don't need to migrate immediately for your integration to work as it used to work before May, we recommend developers try to stay in the newest version possible. Each Playbillion library version has a lifespan of two years from the moment it gets released. This year, we deprecated Playbillion Library 3. Mi migrating your app from Playbillion Library 3 to Playbillion Library 5, it's very similar to start from Playbillion Library 4. It also gives you the additional benefits of the new uh, capabilities and uh, a little extra time before your next required migration. So I'm going to mention the Google Play Developer API several times in this talk. In particular, I will be referring to the component of it called the Subscriptions and In-App Purchases API, built to manage in-app purchases from your app. OK, so the new backend API includes a new set of endpoints to manage your subscriptions catalog programmatically, all of them under monetization.subscriptions. It also includes a new uh, pricing conversion endpoint that allows you to translate any price to all the supported regions and currencies on Google Play. And there's a new endpoint as well to manage your subscription purchase status. Developers may handle their product catalog programmatically in addition or instead of using the Play Console. If you do this, you're going to want to look at these changes because the moment you make your subscriptions editable on Play Console, uh, the old endpoint won't work for them. So if you now use inner products for managing your subscriptions catalog, you should start using monetization subscriptions. The new endpoint uses create instead of insert, patch for all updates, and it introduces the capability to archive a subscription. The inner products endpoint is still there and still works for one-time purchase products. And you could also use it while your existing subscriptions that were converted are not made editable for your subscriptions. So the new resources adopt the same hierarchical structure that we talked about with the entity. So we have subscriptions with several base plans and potentially several offers under them. To see how these new resources map to the old in a product resource, please check the compatibility guide on the documentation under the title May 2022 Subscriptions Changes Guide. So now that you have learned how to configure your subscriptions catalog in the new model, let's see how to change your app to sell these new products. We are going to follow the steps in the Google Play Villain Library 4 to 5 migration guide, which is in the under developer documentation site. The first step is upgrading the dependency of your app to the Play Villain Library to the latest version. You do this on your build.gradle file. The latest version is 5.1 right now. If you started your migration from Play Billion Library 4, your app will probably build right away. If you started with 3, some methods may have been deprecated since then. To check out what methods were deprecated in each version, you can look at the release notes page. So the first step now is the initialization of the billing client, and it has not changed since uh, the previous version. You will still call a uh, new builder to create the client, and you will set a listener to purchases update listener. These will be called every time there's new purchases in your app. After you initialize the billing client, you will establish a connection uh, with Google Play, just like you did before. Um, this is uh, the same start connection call, and you will implement a couple of callbacks on billing setup finished for successful connections and on billing service disconnected to let you know when the billing client has lost the connection. It's really important that the connection is in a healthy state before you enter any user critical flows. So now that the connection is established, it's time to get the products available for purchase from Google Play. There are changes in this step, so your app can support the new product types. So query's key details async is a deprecated method in Playbill and Library 5. It's still present for backwards compatible reasons, but you're going to have to switch this call. Uh, we have created new classes to replace SQ details params and SQ details as well. So now you will use query product details async 
and to build the parameters for this one, you will provide a list of query product details params. Each of these contains the product ID of the product you're trying to retrieve and the product type. These are all new classes. Once you call query product details async, the callback will return a list of product details. Each product details item contains the information about the product, so the subscription, the ID, the title, the type, and so on. An important difference with this new system is that each product, in particular subscription product, contains a list of subscription offer details. This object contains all the different ways a user can acquire this product. If the user is not eligible for a particular offer, it won't be returned at this step. So that's how the system handles a predefined eligibility. Uh, so for example, if a base plan doesn't have any special offers under it or the user is not eligible, to any of the special offers under a base plan, um, you will only get one element in this list. It's one offer with only one pricing phase containing the base price. Um, the subscriptions offers detail object contains some details about the offers that will help you decide how and when to display it and how to sell it. So for example, git offer token returns the offer token needed to launch the purchase of this specific offer and the pricing phases will return the different prices that the user will get along their subscription journey. So you can correctly display the, the product. All right, so developers can decide which offers will be surfacing the app and how. Uh, offer tags in particular offers you a new tool to categorize your offers and decide how this happens. In this example, you can see the developer has created a, a tag called loyalty one year, and he uses it to decide which offer should be displayed to a user that qualifies to a special loyalty program. So if the user meets the developer criteria and the offer is available to them, the app is able to display it. The nice thing about using offer tags for this is that if the developer wants to change what offer the users in this program apply to, they only have to move that label to a different offer and the app will continue working exactly as before with the new offer without having to change the code. So it makes it a little bit more manageable. All right, so let's say the user already selected which offer they want to buy. It's time to launch the billing flow. Okay, the billing flow params set skew details uh, method has been deprecated. Let's see how to specify the product that the user wants to acquire. So for each product that will be bought, create a product details params object that contains the product details object that we talked about before and the offer token that indicates the exact offer you're going to sell the user. This is a string value. Uh, and that billing flow params goes into the, uh, so that list of product details params goes into the billing flow params and it's used with launch, the, the method launch billing flow. Just as before, you'll also specify a reference to um, an activity from which the billing flow will be launched. And so after the user goes through the billing flow, it's time to handle the outcome. In this step is very similar as before. The only small change is on how you pull new active purchases. So since the SKU type is deprecated, you will call query purchases async now with a query purchases params object. And in this object, you have now a set product type method to, do, uh, to take this equivalent step to indicate what kinds of purchases you're pulling. Uh, there's a new enum product type that lets you indicate whether they are subs or inner products. And these are the main changes uh, in your Playbin Library 5 integration. After making these changes, your app is ready to leverage the new features in the Google Play subscriptions platform. All right, so once your app is migrated, your backend needs to start handling purchases made with these new methods. The subscription status management component in your backend uses the subscription purchases API. Let's see how to change this component to handle these new types of purchases. All right, with real-time developer notifications, developers get a message every time a purchase state changes. And with that information, they're able to call the Google Play Developer API to pull the purchase status and adjust the entitlement accordingly. This remains the same. The difference in this new version is that the endpoint you're going to use to pull that subscription status is a different one. 
is called purchases.subscriptions v2, and it only has one method, get. This new get method returns a new set of resources with the purchase status. The old endpoint purchases subscription is still there, and all the other developer lifecycle management actions, such as acknowledging a subscription or canceling it, are still in the old endpoint, so you will still use it. The old get function in that old endpoint only works for purchases made with all methods of the play billing library. So it's not going to be valid if you're already selling new types of uh, subscriptions in your app. All right, and these are the new entities. The subscriptions purchase v2 one contains information about the line items of the different products acquiring this purchase. Each of them is a subscription purchase line item, and you can see how you can obtain things like the base plan that the user acquired or the offer details. To see more about how these entities map to the old one, you can check our uh, May 2022 new subscription features guide on the developer documentation. All right, so this is an example JSON of what you would obtain after calling the subscription purchases status API. And as you can see, pretty simple. So thank you for your attention today. I hope this presentation helps you plan your migration to the new version of the Playbill library. For more information, always check out our developer documentation.